Hey y'all, Jen Evans here, your tax specialist, working with self-employed professionals and other small business owners to make sense of your taxes, pay less, profit more, all that good stuff. Uh, today I want to talk about sales tax. Sales tax comes up a lot in questions with new businesses. Um, they're not really sure how to handle that. So I wanted to do a training today um, to tell you what you need to know about it. Uh, if you are selling a product or most services in Texas, you do need to know about sales tax. Uh, sales tax, as I said, is, is instituted by the state. Um, now you're familiar with sales tax in on the purchasing side of it. When you go buy something, sales tax is added to your purchase, right? We all, we've all done that. Um, and so the sales tax to the state is 6.25%. Each locality adds to that amount. So for most of us, the full sales tax is 8.25%. It's based on where you're doing business, all right? So the first thing you need to do is say, okay, um, I am offering a product or service that is subject to sales tax, okay? So once you made that determination, the next thing you need to do is apply for a sales tax permit. All right, I'm gonna walk through the permit with you today. Um, there, you can do it online. We're gonna go through the PDF. Um, so we can all look at it together without having to wait for new screens to come. Um, but you can do it online, all right? So you apply for your sales tax permit and you get the number, all right? So then the next step is to start charging your client sales tax in addition to their purchases. Okay, now this is not your money. <laughs> That's the thing, it's not your money. You are holding it for the state. And for most businesses, you're going to file a sales tax report and pay the tax to the state quarterly. Now, some larger businesses will do this monthly and some micro businesses might do it annually. But the bottom line is the state of Texas will tell you what they want you to do and that's what you do. I mentioned Texas, this training is for Texas businesses. Since sales tax is a state tax, Every state has different rules about um, their tax. You are taxed um, based on the locality of the business. Now, these days with so many people having online sales, um, you have customers in different states, in different parts of the country. Well, a few years back, it didn't matter. Um, those out-of-state sales were not subject to sales tax. Only your customers in your state were subject to sales tax. That all changed a few years ago though. Um, and, and within the past year, it's, it's changed a lot. Um, most states now require you to file sales tax in their state if you have what's called a nexus. And that means you have a place of business there or you're making sales there. Now, if you're an Amazon Prime fan, like my family is, you might have noticed this. My husband complains about this quite a bit. Um, a lot of things we used to buy from Amazon were, did not have sales tax added onto them. So that was another one of the ways, ways we save money. Um, save on shipping, save on sales tax. But now most of our purchases are subject to sales tax. And that's because Amazon now has a nexus in Texas. And so um, because they are making sales from Texas, they are now having to charge Texas sales tax. So you might be thinking, well, if I have one sale in, you know, from, from uh, California, you know, do I have to file for a sales tax permit in California and, um, and, and, and go through all of that? And the answer is no, probably not. Um, most of these states, when they put the, the nexus in place, they had an exemption amount. So a lot of them, it's $10,000, some are $20,000, some are smaller than that. So you need to do a little bit of research on this if you're doing a lot of out-of-state sales. And what that means is, let's say um, you have a state that has a nexus of $10,000 and you make a total sales of $5,000 in that state. That means you don't have to do anything, right? So once you're above their exemption amount, that's when you have to file for a sales tax permit from that state and file sales tax reports in that state. So if you're doing a lot of sales around the country, be aware of this, but it might not affect you until you are you know, really, really big, or maybe one state seems to be sending a lot of clients, and maybe that one state's what you need to think about. Okay, so moving on, back to Texas. Uh, we're in Texas, most of our sales are in Texas. We are absolutely subject to Texas sales tax. So as I said, first step is get the permit. 
they will give you a number. All right, so you have a sales tax permit number. They will send you a little certificate that you can put up um, behind your counter if you have a retail establishment. You might have noticed that in some of the stores you go into. Um, and that's letting people know that you have a sales tax permit and you are collecting sales tax for the state. You're basically the, the middleman at this point, right? So um, you collect the sales tax and you keep very good records of the sales tax. So you would say, um, let's say you file quarterly. You would say, okay, in this quarter, I made X amount of sales and I collected X amount of sales tax. All right, so then you fill out your sales tax report. Now, what that does is it tells the state, okay, I made this much money. Um, this much money is my total sales. This is my taxable sales. And this was, um, this is what I owe. And there's little, there's calculations you go through to figure out how much you actually owe. Um, you send them a check and, and you're done for that quarter. Um, so this is very important that you stay on top of this, though, because the state of Texas will come knock on your door if they realize you're not paying them money they think that they should have. So make sure you do this. If you don't file a sales tax report and they think you're supposed to, they'll send you a bill and they'll say, um, you are this much money. And people call me up and say, why are all this much money? Um, well, because you didn't file a report, they made an assumption that you probably made this much money in sales and therefore you had this much money. So what you need to do is you need to file the report to show the actual sales and what the actual amount is. But the best part is to avoid that situation altogether. If you're going to do um, a, get a, have a sales tax permit, you need to follow the rules just like with the IRS, okay? So um, another thing to note, I mentioned total sales versus taxable sales. All right, I have a client who has a service business and he has a couple of churches he works with. Well, churches are tax exempt. This means they don't pay sales tax. So his total sales um, include all of his sales, but his taxable sales do not include the sales from those exempt organizations. Now an exempt organization needs to provide you proof that they are an exempt organization that you will keep with their files. Okay, so if a nonprofit comes to you and says, well, we're not supposed to say pay sales tax, tell them, well, good, give me, your, give me your permit and then we're good to go. I will not charge you the sales tax. Okay, when you fill out your, your sales tax report, then you would say, um, you know, here's my total sales, here's my taxable sales, and that is the amount that you will figure out the 8.25% and blah, 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 to get the actual number that you need to owe. Now, again, this is money that you should have sitting in the bank ready to pay because it's not your money. Um, do not mix it up with your regular money. Sometimes people will just kind of mix it in with their income and it might get sent. And then so that quarter comes up and they owe X amount of money and they're scrambling because they don't have it. So the very best thing to do is you take this money and, and put it in a savings account. Um, you might have a savings account just for your taxes, your sales tax, money you're setting aside for your, your self-employment tax, your income tax. Um, so that money is money you do not touch. It's there for when you need to pay these bills. Okay, so that's just a good a good strategy, especially when this number starts getting bigger. Um, because if you owe it and you don't pay it, then you're in trouble. And people always tell me, I don't want to get in trouble. Well, this is how we keep you out of trouble. Um, okay, so <laughs> the other thing to know is there's, it's called sales and use tax. So what does that mean? That means that only one person using a product needs to pay tax on it. Okay, that makes sense, right? So if you buy a product from a retail store, you pay the sales tax. Now that retail store probably bought it from a wholesaler right? They bought it at a, at a discounted price and then they make a profit by selling it to you. Well, they would not have paid the wholesaler sales tax because they would give the, the wholesaler proof of their sales tax permit and um, the, sales, the wholesaler would say, okay, we're not going to charge you sales tax because you're going to be selling it to somebody else. They're going to pay the sales tax. So it comes down the chain, right? Um, so use tax means you purchased something that you didn't pay sales tax on, but then you kept it for your business use or your personal use. And so no tax was paid on it. So in those situations, there's a place on the report that says use tax. So this is, this is um, uh, purchases I made that were not subject to sales tax and you'll be expected to pay it at that point. So if you're buying stuff for wholesale and you think, oh, this is just for me to use, I'm saving money, you're not saving money. Um, you will have to pay the sales tax, but instead of paying it to 
the business you're going to pay directly to the state. Okay, does that make sense? Is everybody caught up with me? Very good. Um, okay, so um, I think that covers the basics. So let's look at the application because the application can be a little confusing. So we're going to just walk through it really quickly so you can get online and do it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but this is something you can do on your own. You don't have to pay me or anybody else to do it. I'm happy to do it for you. If some people just don't want to deal with it at all, um, that's perfectly fine. I'm happy to charge you for doing that. Um, but you don't have to. So um, I will uh, I will save my services for what you really need me to help you with. And this is something that you might want to just do on your own. So let's look at it real quick. I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to look at the Texas application for sales tax permit. So I'm assuming that we can all see this. Now, as I said, this is um, the PDF version. Uh, they really want you to do everything online now. Okay, so they really are really directing everybody online for all of this stuff in Texas. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you open up your business is you're gonna get an account with the state so that you can do all of this stuff. Okay, so the first part of the form says, if you are a sole proprietor, Start on the next page, item 10. Okay, so the type of business you are is going to make a difference. If you are an LLC or a corporation or a partnership um, that has been established by the state, um, you have uh, different rules you might have to go by on some of this stuff. But sole proprietors is anybody running a business, anybody who's collecting money for services or products is subject to sales tax rules. You're subject to employment law. Um, so you don't have to be established as a corporation to be responsible for those things, okay? Um, but a sole proprietor is, everybody starts out as a sole proprietor. So if you're a sole proprietor, they're saying, you know, keep on moving, you don't have to fill this part out. So these are the people who have established an entity with the state. You have a corporation, a nonprofit corporation, your LLCs, your partnerships, professional corporations. All of these things here are things that you had to go through the state to get um, the entity formed. Now, you might have done it through an attorney or through legal zoom or something, but it still it went to the state. Okay, so here we're going to put our legal name of the corporation. This is what the state has on file as being your name. Okay, now list any current or past 11 digit tax, Texas taxpayer number. So the Texas Comptroller Public Accounts will give you an 11 digit number when you form your entity. Okay, um, now the Texas Workforce Commission for Employment has a nine digit number. So we get, we get those mixed up all the time. So nine, nine digits, 11 digits, keep it separate. Okay, have you ever received a Texas vendor or payee number? So you might have had a sales tax permit in the past, and then you um, you let it go for whatever reason. You, you close the business, you take a break, whatever. So if you've already had it, have them, they want to know, they're checking to see if you owe money, <laughs> basically what they're doing. Um, so we're, we're going through, so federal ident employment identification number. Now, when you are forming an entity, you will get an EIN number from the federal government as part of the whole process. As a sole proprietor, we usually, um, the, the default is to use your social security number, all right? So I'm sure we get down to line 10, it'll ask you for your social security number. Um, but these days, we don't necessarily want our social security numbers floating all over the world. We're trying, we have issues with, um, uh, you know, identity theft and things. So even a sole proprietor without employees can get a federal employer identification number. Again, you don't have to pay anybody to do it for you. You can go online and do it yourself. Um, I can tell you about that in another um, in another time. So here it says, check it if you do not have an FEIN. If you have an entity, you should have an EIN. Okay, so enter the home state or country where the entity was formed. So that'll be Texas and then the date of your formation. You will have a letter from the state saying, what the date of formation was. You need to keep that letter where you can access it, all right? Um, Non-Texas entities. Now, this would be the case if you had to get someone out of state who's doing business in Texas, um, like Amazon, then they would be here. So you're just, if it doesn't apply to you, you're gonna skip it. You can click these little eyes to get information about any of these things. Um, let's see, so, and I just did a search for uh, Texas sales tax permit application, P 
PDF if you want to just look at this on your own before you do it. Now you can fill it in and mail it. Like I said, they want you to do it online, but the online ones, you know, you have to, if you fill out some, and you click next, you fill out some, you click next. So you don't get to see the whole thing. So sometimes it's nice to see the whole thing and kind of get an idea what they want first. That's kind of what we're doing here. Okay, so list all general partners, officers, or managing members. These are people that the tech that Texas has on their list, right? These are people that they know you have because you form the entity. Okay, so we're still not to line 10. Okay, so we're going to fill out who these people are, the contact information, percent of ownership if it's a corporation or a partnership. Okay, so they want all of this information. Okay, if you're not a sole proprietor, go to item 15. So now we have the sole proprietor part. So the corporations are going to skip this part. LLCs, skip this part. Okay, the IRS views you as a sole proprietor, but Texas sees you as a limited liability corporation. So you need to kind of keep that straight. Okay, so now you are a sole proprietor. Most of us, again, start out as sole proprietors. You are still a legal business. Being an LLC does not make you a legal business. Running a business makes you a legal business and, and obligated to do these things. All right, so legal name of the sole proprietor. This is you. This is not in, This is not your business. This is your actual name. Because as a sole proprietor, your business is you. You are your business. There is no separation there. Okay, social security number, as I said. Um, let's see. Federal employer identification. So if you do have your EIN, you'll put it here. Um, you'll also put your social security number here. Okay, again, did you have a number before? You changed your business. This would be your personal um, business. Have you ever received a Texas vendor pay you number? Um, and what is that number? So again, they're looking to see if you have a history with Texas. Okay, so now line 50, we've all picked back up. So if you are an LLC, you did the first part, so the part you did the second part, not everybody's here. Mailing address of the tax paying entity. Okay, so obviously your name, your address, and your, and your information of Texas should already have this. Uh, it's somebody if you're still a proprietor though, they, this might be the first they know that you are even a business. Okay, um, so your cell phone number, um, fax number, do people still have faxes? I don't know if not, just skip it. Your business website address or addresses. Okay, contact person for business records. So this would be the one person that Texas can call and say, uh, we have a question about your report. So it could be you, it could be the main person, or it could be somebody that works for you that handles this sort of thing. All right, um, alternate contact. Okay, keep it going. Name of bank or other financial institutions. Okay, is it a business account or is it a personal account? If you will be accepting payments by credit card and or through an online payment processing company, in the name of the processor. I use Square for my, for my um, credit card. Um, transaction, so I would put Square here. Merch identification number sign my processor. So we'd have to go back into your Square account or PayPal or whatever you're using to get that account. If you don't have an identification number for a processor, then we would just skip that part here. Okay, so moving on, we're on page three now. Um, the legal name should be the same as, so we're going to do exactly the same. We don't want to confuse them at this point. Okay, now complete all information in this section for each place of business in Texas. Okay, so you might have more than one location. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to um, put the different locations down and you'll need to divide your sales up by those locations. And the reason for that is, let's say I have a location in Harris County and I also have a location in Montgomery County. Well, they might have different um, local sales tax amounts. Um, you might have noticed sometimes, like I, I noticed it's going to McDonald's because I was buying their, um, their, they wouldn't have their drinks for a dollar. <laughs> and so I was, I would kind of swing through the dark and grab a drink every now and then. And if I would went to the one by my house, it cost me a penny more than it did at <laughs> the one in, in uh, the Woodlands. And so that's why it's, it was a one, you know, half of a percent difference or something. Okay, so you're going to put your locations here. Okay, so again, this is going to let them know what amount of sales tax you're supposed to be collecting. Okay, so within what city limits is this place of business? Are you within Houston city limits? Um, are you within Conroe city limits? Um, so I actually live in the county, uh, and so I would be in a Harris County business where I live in Cyprus. Now, check this box if this place of business is not located within the, within the limits of a city in Texas. Okay. Um, is this place business operated from your home? Perfectly okay. It'll be your home address. Do you ship or deliver items to cities or counties in Texas other than where you have your place of business? So if you're, um, you're shipping products, 
um, then that's where they're going to look at. Maybe there's a different, they used to um, charge different amounts um, depending where you send it to. So I had a client who, um, who did food service in people's homes. And so he was all over, you know, Houston is pretty big. And so you'd have these different counties and places would have different um, different sales tax amounts. So when we did his sales tax report, we had to say he was in Harris County for this, he was in Montgomery County, he was in Houston. And everywhere he went, it was, it was just a nightmare. They don't do that anymore. So if your main place of business is um, in Houston or the Woodlands or Conroe, whatever, that's the amount they're gonna do, they're gonna use. It just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so enter the name and address of the owner or landlord of this place of business. It asks you for a lot of information here. Do you maintain a distribution center, warehouse, office, or any other physical location where business is conducted? Okay, um, business is conducted. So again, this is where you're gonna be collecting some money. Okay, do you have any representative agent, salesperson, canvasser, or solicitor who operates under your authority to conduct business in Texas, including selling, delivering, or taking orders for taxable items. Um, if you are delivering, if you're doing door-to-door -door sales, you're gonna put yes here. They wanna know who these people are because this is the person who's gonna be responsible for collecting that sales tax. So when you collect sales tax, you are, again, you're holding it for the state. And one really huge way to get in trouble with the state is to collect sales tax that you then do not turn over to the state. Okay, that's that's very bad. Okay, um, let's see. Do you own, use, or sell, rent, uh, tangible personal property located in Texas? So again, these are all just you know yes or no questions that are um, trying to get a feel for how your business is conducted in Texas to let them kind of figure out what they want you to be responsible for paying the sales tax. Um, I really try to keep these as narrow as possible. Um, like here, do you sell at temporary locations, fairs, trade shows, etc.? If yes, list locations or event names and when you will be at location or event. Um, people who sell at fairs on the weekends and stuff, that's like a lot. And so you might not know where you're going to be every day for the next you know, year. So um, honestly, and just would kind of um, be a little bit more vague about those. If you know for sure that you are going to be selling every weekend at, you know, Tomball Trade Days or something, then yeah, you could put it on there. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. Or if you add it later on down the road, I wouldn't worry about it. Do you have a franchisee or licensee operating under your name is required to collect sales and use taxes in Texas? So this is if you are, fran you are having other people do their own businesses sell for you. Do you have a substantial ownership in or are owned in whole or substantial part by a person who maintains a location in Texas? Okay, again, these things are probably going to be no for most businesses. Okay, it's really not going to change the amount of, of what you're going to be paying in. Um, it's just giving them a whole lot of information. Okay, do you have internet or mail order sales? Okay, a lot of us are, do, are doing online sales and mail order sales, just, you know, yeah. Um, are you a marketplace provider? Probably going to be no. Will your anticipated monthly taxable sales exceed $8,000 per month? That's the number. Okay, that's the key number, $8,000 per month. Um, anticipated, is this anticipated for the rest of your business life? You know, um, I would say within the next year or so. So um, if you are over $8,000 a month, what happens is they're probably going to have you file your sales tax reports monthly rather than quarterly. Okay, so that's why that's important. Um, if you say no, but then you start filing quarterly reports that are, you know, that big an amount, um, then they're just, they're going to tell you to start filing monthly. They don't want you sit on that money for so long. They don't want you using that money for your own business, which I guess could be tempting at some point. Okay, will you sell alcoholic beverages? If so, you need to have a permit for that, right? Um, is this permit for a wine we located outside of Texas? It will ship wine to consumers in Texas. Um, again, everybody I'm talking to is in Texas. Okay, um, will you sell membership to a health spa? If yes, you must attach a copy of your health spa certification or registration issued by the Texas Secretary of State. Um, Business licenses are not a huge thing in Texas. There are some states you have to have a business license for every little thing that you do. Here we don't so much. 
So, but there are some businesses that absolutely do have to have um, permit and permits and things. So this is an example of that. Um, will you sell electronic cigarettes or any other device that simulates smoking by using a mechanical heating element, battery, or electronic circuit to deliver nicotine or other substances to the individual inhaling the device? You either do it or you don't. I mean, you know what you're doing. Um, are you going to sell them over the phone or the internet? So you're going to, this is obligating you to more regulations. Will you sell fireworks? If you have answered no to questions 30 through 37, 39, and 43, do you like to use the optional single local tax rate? So that would be if you're absolutely only in one, one place and you're not ever leaving your place, let's say you have a retail store, people come to your store and buy, um, you could use the, the single local sales tax rate. Okay, um, end of the date, you'll begin making sales. This needs to be later <laughs> than the date you're filling out the application. Um, will you operate the business all year? Is it, is it seasonal? Maybe you have a snow cone stand that you only have running during um, uh, certain months of the year. All right, so enter your North American Industry Classification System code. You need to know what this code is. Um, if you don't know your code, what is your principal type of business? This code goes on your tax return as well. So you need to know what your code is. Um, you can Google it online and it will tell you what your code is. Primary business activity and type of products or services to be sold. Um, uh, let's see, you um, are a, you sell um, uh, candles, you sell um, little trinkets, uh, whatever you're selling, you're going to the to the um, the fair on the weekend and you're selling crafts that you made. Okay, so your business needs to have some sort of specific thing that it's doing, types of products or services. Again, a lot of services are taxable. Will you be required to report interest earned on sales tax? These specific instructions, this is not going to apply to very many people. Will you sell, lease, or rent off-road heavy duty, 50 horse power, more diesel power? Again, you either do it or you don't. Um, it's not something that you're going to, you know, probably add on later. This is either part of your business or it's not. If you'll be providing telecommunication services, so all of these things, will you sell prepaid wireless telecom telecommunication services? So on the the online application, it's just got these lists, you know, yes, 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 no, 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 no. So again, most of these are gonna be no. Just make sure that you um, you, you're, you read the question carefully and you know what you are checking off. If you purchase an existing business or business assets, complete item 53. Um, if not, skip to item 54. This is, this does not look accurate. It should be skipping 54. Because um, if you haven't um, purchased it, you wouldn't fill out this part here. So if you buy business from somebody else, you need to put that information. Again, they are checking to see if that person owes the sales tax. All right, um, now moving along, applicants must be at least 18 years old. If you have a person younger, the parent or legal guardian can obtain the sales tax permit. Again, this is like a legal contract that the state is giving you permission to collect sales tax on its behalf and then turn it over to the state. So, um, so that's why a minor can't do it, an adult has to do it. Okay, so we declare the information in this document in the attachment is true. Um, again, you can put your driver's license number here. So we're, we're verifying the information is true. Sole owner, partner, officer, and then any additional partners who might be um, on the hook for this. Um, let's see. And then they have, uh, you might need to do this other stuff that you probably want. Okay, so that was the, um, Okay, so that, that was the application. Okay, so I wanted to go through it because I invariably have people who, who call me while they're trying to do it and they say, I don't know what they're asking me, I don't know what it is. And part of that is because you've never seen it before and asking these weird questions and people are like, I don't know what to put. Well, you put what, you know, you put what's true, you put what's accurate. But um, have getting a heads up on some of the things I ask, I think is kind of helpful. Okay, so now we're gonna take just a few more minutes and we're gonna look at the report. Okay, so let me find it. Okay, so this is what the actual return looks like. And again, this is all done, done online now. So they have a thing called web file, see right here, web file. So you can go online, you can do all of this stuff, it won't take you five minutes. So the preparation for it is the most important. Now you should um, be keeping a record of all of your sales and expenses. I'm gonna talk about that in another video. Um, it's bookkeeping and a lot of people 
aren't doing it. Um, if you are subject to sales tax reporting, you need to do it because each quarter or month, depending on your sales, they're going to ask you what these numbers are. Now, these are actual sales they're looking for. So it's not profit. It's not net. It's, it's you sold 100 products at $10 each. This is what your sales were. All right. So um, you need to have those numbers in front of you. Beyond that, it's just super easy to figure out. So the taxpayer number, this is going to be the number that they gave you when you filled out that permit, okay? Now the filing period would be first quarter 2021, which would be January, February, and March sales. The due date is gonna be the 20th of the following month. So April 20th, tomorrow is when my sales tax reports are due for my clients. Okay, so we're, we're skipping all of this stuff. Okay, so we have your address. We have the taxpayer name and mailing address. Okay, total Texas sales, whole numbers only. So you're gonna round up or round down. So let's say you made $10,000. Okay, so we're going to $10,000 was my sales. Now, all of that was taxable because I don't have any uh, exempt client. If I did, then I would say, okay, um, $8,000 of it was taxable, okay? So again, the part that's not taxable would be those nonprofit organizations that you work for. Um, anybody, if, if, you're, if you're the wholesaler selling to retail establishments, then a lot of you, some of your sales might be tax exempt because of that as well. Taxable purchases. Um, this is almost always zero for my clients, but this is the amount that um, would be the stuff that you bought. You didn't pay sales tax, but you actually, you, you're keeping it. So you do owe sales tax. So you would put that number there. The total amount subject to tax in this case is going to be that $8,000, the taxable sales. If all of my sales were taxable, then it would be the $10,000 number. Okay, now multiply item four by the combined tax rate, including state and local. So 8.25% um, is what most of us are doing. So I'm going to just figure that out real quick. So I don't do math in my head. I don't like doing math on the calculator either. Okay, so $8,000 times 0.0825 is $660. Now, this should be money that you collected from everybody, so it should be sitting in a bank account somewhere. Now, when you do, once you have your permit, this is a blank form, but once you have your permit, um, if you do this online or they mail you this form, I still have a client that has a form mailed to him. Um, <laughs> uh, it'll have the number. It'll tell you what number this needs to be. Okay, now timely filing discount is 0.005%, so 660 times 0 0.005 is 3.30. So um, you get a $3.30 discount um, by paying it on time. We have no prior payment. So our net tax due is going to be 660 minus $3.30, 656.70. I'm sure you're laughing because I didn't do that in my head, but um, my head does not work that way. Okay, penalty and interest. No penalty and interest. Now, if we if we filed this late, um, if we just forgot about it and um, and they sent us the letter and said, oh, you owe four thousand dollars in sales tax, and we figure out the actual amount is six hundred and sixty dollars, but we're going to owe penalties and interest because we messed up and didn't do it. Okay, so then our total amount due for this quarter is six hundred and fifty six dollars and seventy cents. Now I can pay that. Um, with online by using my routing and my account number for a withdrawal. Um, I'm not sure if you can pay this with um, credit cards or not, but um, they will give you the options for paying that on the online form. Again, this is the, um, the, the printable non-personalized form. Okay, but they will, you'll be able to go directly from this to paying because they want to have the payments. Okay, so here's a little interest, your, um, your, your instructions for, here's your penalty and interest, one to 30 days late, 5%. So instead of taking the, um, the little discount of 0.005%, um, now you have to add that on. Okay, so um, that kind of sums it up. So again, just follow the rules they give you. They're going to want you to um, pay either uh, quarterly or monthly. Again, the big guys are the monthly, pretty much everybody else is quarterly. 
if you're just an inactive business that rarely makes sales, but your business is still legal and, and running, um, they might have you just do it annually. But then the numbers are, are what tell that. And once you have, once you've been given an assigned schedule, then that is your assigned schedule. Okay, so that was my uh, little training on sales tax. Again, this applies to Texas businesses. Um, we also have franchise tax, which we'll talk about another time in a little shorter video because it's much easier. Um, and But the sales tax is very important. So more and more businesses are subject to this. Uh, fewer and fewer businesses are doing it. And so they're getting in trouble. So um, once you put yourself out there as selling, they find you. So you know, um, you, know you might have, have your business online. You might have a Facebook page. Um, people might turn you in, they might do that too. Um, and so um, this is very, very important. So uh, whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you have a side gig, um, you are responsible for this. Now, what if you are a, um, a rep for the MLM companies? You know, I'm selling Plexus, I'm selling um, uh, uh, doTERRA, I'm selling, you know, whatever it is I'm selling. Um, the sales are actually, for those are actually going through the company. Okay, so the company's the one collecting the sales tax, the company's the one doing that. When you fill out the, the order form for your, for your customers, the sales tax is on there, but you're not responsible for it. Okay, now if you're buying products at wholesale that you're going to resell, then you're subject to this. And so, so pay attention to that. But if you're only selling um, through your company's website, all the money's going to them and then they're paying you whatever your cut is, then you do not have to worry about this. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, hopefully this, this helps um, straighten some stuff out for you. And if you do have need help with it, I'm happy to help you with it. Uh, I just feel like it's something a lot of people can and, and want to do on their own. So I wanna make that a little bit easier for you. Okay, um, thank you so much. And I will uh, talk to you soon, bye-bye.